I'm Andrew Reed, Juris Doctor, Small Business Development, IT and Marketing Guru from Victoria, BC. Follow me for new podcasts on beginner investing in Canada, business development, marketing, and personal development as I survive, grow, and prosper. Hello, everyone, Canada. Let's get right to it. These are tough times and these are tough markets. Those who can resist emotional impulses are most likely to succeed. But how to achieve success amidst the current world economic turmoil? Uh, crypto either staying flat and stagnant, going a little bit up and then dropping considerably down. The USA's inability to decide if crypto is a security or a currency and how to regulate it and regulate it and, uh, and to what extent. 20 different opinions all across the spectrum as to whether the stock and the crypto markets will go bull or go bear, everything in between. How can the beginner investor navigate this iceberg-filled ocean? This video shares my approach based on logic and balanced and the combined knowledge of my many mentors as broken down and applied to my situation specifically. I hope that you will always take the same reasoning-based approach in order to do the best for yourself in your unique situation. Okay, let's break it down into generally accepted facts. Number one, holding cash in savings accounts or fiat currency, of which governments print more of at will, is going to decrease the spending power of that cash over time. However, a stockpile of cash will allow you to invest in both stocks and crypto when they're on sale maximizing your returns on investment. The stock market over a broad index has made around 10 to 11% gains average per year, including reinvested dividends. Very basically, you get paid to own the stocks. Over a long enough time span, what they call time horizon, a balanced stock market portfolio with reinvested dividends is a relatively low risk pathway with steady gains. Certain crypto coins like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Matic, Luna, they have vastly outperformed the stock market. They could just as easily have not. Crypto is high risk, but it has the chance for relatively high gains. Over a long enough time horizon, most experts agree that crypto will rise in value. I personally think that could be limited to the cryptos that you'll find right now in the top 10, you know, and most specifically, and the least amount of risk being in Bitcoin itself. Crypto stock markets, they are cyclical. Uh, that means that they're revolving different sectors. Altcoins might be up while Bitcoin is down or um, commodity sectors could be up while tech sectors are down, which is something that may be going on right now. Shares of stock, go up and down in value. These values are recorded on charts. And the values will dip when more shares are selling than buying. The values will rise when more shares are being bought than sold. Um, advanced traders monitor this buying pressure to attempt to determine an imminent forthcoming rise in value of which they can profit from. Five, there are three general points on the spectrum of types of stock and crypto investors. You have type A, day traders who watch the markets very closely and they attempt to capitalize on short-term increase, increases and decreases in value. Day traders will make money with correct predictions of both decreases and increases by using advanced types of trading. There's a big learning curve with day trading. Uh, you have type B, swing traders. These traders buy low and sell high and use a variety of techniques like shorting, or uh, which is making money off stocks that are decreasing in value, much like the day traders, but often over a longer period of time. Uh, so both swing traders and dra day traders do best working with a lot of cash on hand, having capital at hand. This way the value uh, doesn't have to increase or decrease as much in percentage in order for them to make a worthy profit. So what I mean by this is 
uh, swing trading and day trading is not really the best when you're at the one thousand to ten thousand dollar level. Um, you're better off just placing it in uh, something that mimics the S and P five hundred, for example, or um, something steady and stable that has a relatively low risk and a gain. So day trading and swing trading work best when you have a lot of capital because then even if it's you know a stock's going up two to three percent, you're still making hundreds of dollars. So it's a big big difference. Uh, then you have type C, long-term investors, who in crypto lingo are known as hodlers, which just means they buy and they hold it. So on a long enough time span and with a diverse enough portfolio, long-term investments tend to rise in value with minimal risk relatively and minimal interaction. Most mentors advocate for extremely minimal action with a simple portfolio rebalancing from time to time to make sure or to help ensure the maximum long-term gains are being made. So based on these generally accepted facts, one can build a strategy that suits their A, time horizon, which is how long they have before they need to cash out their investments, and B, risk tolerance, which is how much one is willing to risk, um, increased risk equals the potential for bigger gains, but also bigger losses. Once you've built your strategy, you can cling to it in times of emotional turmoil. Like uh, the month of September in 2021 for crypto, generally the worst month that was scary, but those that held on saw one of the or the biggest um, all-time highs in crypto sh shortly after. Uh, but if your strategy is to hold for five to six years, and that's your time horizon, um, then this is what you stick to. So in three years from now, if Bitcoin is down 10%, you're not really going to care that much about these minor fluctuations. You're going to buy it when it's low. Um, it's only... Uh, a loss when you sell it. So if it's temporarily down 10%, then it could be back up 10% in a short period of time. But until you sell, you haven't actually realized that loss. Um, so resist the fear, don't sell, you wait, things will get better. If it's rough times like it is right now with the war in Ukraine, um, then maybe best not to check on it. Just let it sit in there for a couple months until you start hearing things are on their way back up again. And people will not be quiet about it. When do you cut your losses? Because there are times when that is appropriate. And this should be part of your strategy and not an emotional reaction. So, for example, news that shows a change in fundamentals coupled with a downward trend or a selling pressure then set your percentage that you're willing to lose, 25%, 15%. That is up to you, and just stick to it. Um, beware of the fundamentals. If the news shows that the CEO was indicted for fraud and the stock is poised to plunge or Elon Musk is messing with it in a weird way, um, then set a sell, sell limit if you haven't already and cut your losses based on your strategy and your predetermined amount, not emotions. Tips that I personally follow for reducing the chances of emotional trading. Know your risk tolerance in advance and don't go beyond it. My personal risk tolerance is uh, 10 to 15% of my portfolio. In my mind, I've already lost that money. So I keep that amount divided between small cap stocks, cryptos. I don't go over that 10 to 15%, even if the deal seems too good to pass up. And adhering to this preset strategy could save you a lot of heartache in the future. I do personally believe in buying the dip. So when you believe in the fundamentals of a stock or a crypto, then buy while it's low, and this will reduce the average price you paid for it. Doing this, you can maximize your profit in the long term. Um, you can also use strategies like dollar, dollar cost averaging, which is just a steady automated purchase of the stock that you believe in. Um, and this will steadily increase the amount of the shares that you own. Uh, 
it will buy more shares on the dips and less on the gains. But overall, uh, it will motionlessly increase your position size, which leads to bigger gains, bigger gains with lower percentages on upswings, and a lot less stress when you're using dollar cost averaging methods. You're not checking your portfolio amount. You're not seeing the little ups and downs of the stock market. Tips: Be wary of articles uh, telling you that stocks are good. I've been burnt this way uh, once or twice, once with a prospective mining stock. The article claimed the company had found gold in them hills. Well, this pumped the stock. The article writers took their profits, and the SEC noticed the pump and dump scheme and halted trading on that company, leaving me with a pile of near worthless shares um, that were difficult to sell. So my mistake was buying on emotion, on FOMO, which is fear of missing out, and not doing my due diligence to make sure that this company could hold up in the long term. I made a couple of mistakes like that at the beginning of my investing, and we all we all will. It's part of the, the learning process. The next tip for not trading emotionally is diversification. Uh, buying an array of investments, since most markets traditionally do not uh, have everything go up and down at the same time. There's exceptions to this, but generally there will always be something booming, um, something in a bull market, which is means that uh, more people are buying than selling. So, for example, inflation causes the dollar to rise, which can hurt treasury bonds, but might increase cryptocurrency values as people attempt to hedge, which means balancing their risk against inflation. So please note this means a little more than just holding different types of stocks. This is a good thing to do, increase your exposure, but that is not true diversification because the stock market could definitely crash as an entire market, leaving very few stock shares intact. So true diversification would mean holding physical real estate, stocks, crypto, private equity, other distinct markets that have different factors for increasing and decreasing in value. For example, tangible assets like uh, valuable art um, might increase in value while the dollar is decreasing due to inflation and then stock market and bond market are crashing but then your art piece is now gaining more value it's worth more or um, you know a, a unique vehicle or, or something along those lines so diversify a well-defined, simple investment strategy and sticking to it is considered the best way historically to maximize your long-term performance returns. Um, now, if you're just getting started, like I said before, you have minimal capital, like $5,000 or less, for example, then you could consider a simple low-cost ETF to start with, which offers stock market diversification as well as reducing your risk, increasing exposure, and just doing the work of rebalancing your portfolio for you. Some of the beginner ETFs that I personally like was um, our uh, BMO's uh, ZDV, Z Delta Victor, uh, the Toronto Stock Exchange. Um, provides a solid dividend, which pays monthly, uh, which is a great hedge against riskier investments. And it's gone up over the last few years. Um, went from 16 to around 19 and right now is around 2150 so it might be worth waiting till it drops down a bit if it does um, and this is one potential ETF you can also invest in the entire S&P 500 through Vanguard um, which is VFW um, Victor Forest W <laughs> so um, the Vanguard ETF does come with a short or uh, a little bit of a dividend and it's uh, often recommended for beginners because of their low fees and consistent growth over time but this is your money and your risk and your time horizon so please always do your due diligence and keep emotions out of trading uh, this will conclude my video on emotion free trading and investing in crypto and stock markets um, Hang tight and stick to your strategies.